I don't know how WIC can be abusive towards Merck at all. But that's why I call it abusive, because if I did anything you were doing, put me in jail, because it would be intentional. <sighs> what a horrible clip. All you've done is piqued my curiosity. You keep saying you're being honest, but I don't think that was an honest answer. I'm, I'm just being real. Okay, so you think that that is not an honest answer and that is your problem. I'm being honest with you. You're not listening. You're not listening. It sounds like, if I may interject, it does sound Please. like, Wick, you don't have maybe a lot of experience in neurodivergent people, maybe, because everything Merck's saying, everything, my audience is very neurodivergent. We're all neurodivergent here. We have exactly the same lived experience. This makes sense to us. Even if Merck goes off her meds and then realizes she needs to get back on it, that's still the right choice. ADHD people go on and off their meds all the time. Can it's someone make a wrong choice with their medication? Yes, but you're assuming yes, it's always okay. negative. So you're, the but you, you that you lead with fear. The wrong choice is out there, correct? My concern is you lead with fear every time you correct somebody. You're always afraid they're making the wrong choice instead of celebrating her having agency and getting better enough to get off her meds. Or, oh, that's great that you don't need to spend money on prescriptions because like that's expensive. Or I acknowledge or, that there is times where I do need to take my medicine or where right. there's times. I okay, I don't know if this is I watch too much Death Note or House or what. Um, this is something that I have a great, God, I have so much personal experience to draw from on all of these topics now. Okay, here is an issue that I run into sometimes when I talk to people that I feel are being um, emotional. Um, I run into issues where people will say things like, Stephen, when you talk about these things, you sound like a prosecutor, or um, Stephen, you need to be more emotional in these conversations, okay? This is an issue that I feel like I run into a lot uh, with people is people will hide behind things like neurodivergent or emotional or feel statements when the reality is is we should be able to look at a collection of actions and we should be able to see um, you know what exactly is going on uh, or, or rather when we look at the actions all of these actions should be powered by the same underlying like thought process basically that, but like I feel like some people don't want to admit to it or some people don't want to own that, so they start to create a bunch of different excuses in a lot of different places, and then when you try to push them on it, they're like, oh, well, these are just my feelings or whatever. And it's like, well, hold on, this is not possible. Like, you're doing things that are contradictory to your stated feeling. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I can think of an example here. Um, I'm trying to think if I, can I think of an example that's not related to a particular person or thing? Uh, Brittany's saying it's okay for mentally people to go off their meds and stand like responsible, yeah. I don't know if I can think of an example of this. Somebody else can think of one in chat, I can respond to it, but yeah. Uh, I, I notice this happens a lot. When somebody's making the decision to go off or on their meds, I feel like because some people want to do, people are really obsessed with validation. They're obsessed with looking for validation, and sometimes people like giving validation. It feels good to get validated, and it feels good to give validation, because you feel like, yeah, somebody's listening to you. Um, however, one of the things here is whether or not somebody's making a decision to go on or off their meds, we have to look at the underlying thought process. Like if somebody comes to me and they're like, I'm just not feeling this shit anymore, I'm dropping it, fuck it, I feel better now, I'm taking, I'm getting off my meds, it's like, okay, this is probably a bad decision, right? That's probably a bad decision. But um, if somebody says something like, I've been talking with my therapist, um, I've made a ton of progress, I've got a lot of healthy routines, I know how to deal with like my emotional dysregulation, I think I'm gonna start to wean off my meds and see how I feel. Oh, okay, fine, yeah, I support that. Let's see how it goes, right? That's a good thought process. Um, just because somebody's getting on or off their meds is not enough to know whether or not it's a good or bad decision. You need to look at the actions, you know? Um, For, okay, just as a real quick, for anybody speculating that anything over the past month has had anything to do with me making mistakes, it is absolutely not the case, okay? <laughs> absolutely not the case. Um, or maybe even for the past like eight months, I don't think so. But anyway, okay, stop speculating and stop commenting because now you have losers are vague posting to my vague posting, okay? All right. <clears throat> um, all right. Sorry, anyway, so let's keep listening. But also, I don't know why Merck got off her meds or got back on her meds or anything. I have no idea. You started it, I did start it. I thought things were gonna happen a little differently, so I f you guys. I fully admit that, okay? Make your angry threads be mad about it. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Times where I do need to take my medicine or where right. there's time. I think truth exists outside of what we believe. Yeah, but you're your the truth. only- yeah, your truth. Like, you're doing this no, thing truth. again. You're doing it again. We even appeal to authority and it's not good enough for you. Her lived experience isn't good enough for you. Me back. I really wish you ever clipped this. I could have seen the conversation beforehand. I'm really curious about people talking about starting or stopping their meds on a public platform. I'm really curious about what's being said. I haven't heard Brittany say anything publicly that is like unhinged relating to medication. Um, but if Merck is involved, I don't know if Brittany's feelings about me would make her give dog shit advice to validate Merck because Merck stands in opposition to me. So 
I'm not sure. I have no idea. Backing her up isn't good enough for you. Rora, even backing her up isn't good enough for you. What's going to be good enough for Wick? If you're going off meds, do it with the doctor. 90% of the people I've met in the psych ward are there because they decided to go off their meds on their own. Your doctor will help you figure out the best option. Stay strong mentally, oh bros. Sure. <clears throat> what do you think I'm challenging? It sounds like you don't trust her, even though you keep saying I should hold her accountable as an adult. You don't trust her to be an adult enough with her body. I don't know what that statement from Brittany made. I'm, I'm hard respecting that because I don't know. The, but like, yeah, of course, you don't trust people kind of who are on medication to necessarily make their own completely autonomous decisions. This is why they consult other people like doctors or sometimes they'll consult like friends. Um, yeah, like you, you don't have, like when your mind is poisoned and you have the inability to make good, healthy decisions for yourself, of course you you give a little bit of that autonomy to other people that you trust, like a doctor, like a friend, like a family member. Yeah, of course. No, it's not and that I don't trust her. You say you don't either. like infant infantilizing if people, but you're infantilizing me by saying she's you are not literally like doing that. Enough. Yeah. You're, you're, she's I'm, not mental I'm, enough to make her own decisions. I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm training you how I would like to, I treat anyone else as an adult. Well, that's the problem. Right? You need yeah, to treat adult. Merc the way Merc is, not like any other adult. She's not like any other adult. She's herself. I'm going to challenge you to work harder to treat people the way they need to be treated, not the way other people want to be treated. Because you can't compare someone who's non-neurodivergent to me. Because I am neurodivergent. I'm different. Clearly, I'm zany. I am AD. I have a past experience. And this is what I don't get. There's also uh, people have a really hard time with this thing where people are like, I'm an individual. And it's like, yeah, sure. But we also all exist along like a spectrum of probabilistic outcomes, you know? Like if somebody tells me some information, like how do you think diagnoses work for a hospital, right? I'm gonna prescribe you a medication I prescribe to a million other people. Well, how can you do that? I'm an individual, right? Of course, like you're an individual, but like we can also speak pretty broadly about people. There's experiences that people like, there's experiences people don't like. You know, like, yeah, I mean, you'll. Why people try to compare every person to every person. We are all different. Wick, you're different. Care why, right, someone, I told this to Mr. Girl, okay? Which is, I'm getting a lot of Mr. Girl vibes here. Oh, uh, 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 you're comparing me. Um, don't, you're comparing don't me. compare of her to I'm him. Of course I'm comparing you. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> of course I'm comparing you. When I see few things that are an unfair thing to say. Yeah, it is, to me, it's extremely unfair because you can't compare two people. You need to take me as like you've never met me before. You don't need to have any other person in your mind. If you want to get, if you truly want the honesty and you want answers and you want to actually like have a productive conversation, you need to act like you don't know anything else but me. You need to le learn who I am. I also don't know why this was cut. This clip seems so stupid. What, what, are, what are we looking for? And listen for? to me. If we are to get who you are. <laughs> Listen to me. That's all you have to do. Listen to what I'm saying. Trust that I'm being honest with you because I'm trying to be honest. Okay. I came in here trying to talk to you. I told you what I said. This is your community. So I'm talking in the sphere of being in your bubble. Okay. I'm trying to be respectful. I'm trying to be grounded. But the more you acknowledge you, the more you try and pin me or paint me as being dishonest, it's, it's, it, I get aggravated because I'm sitting here telling you this is who I am and you're not accepting it. So if you're not going to accept who I am, then there's no point in having a conversation because it goes nowhere. So I mean, what Mark is saying is also true, but what I would say to that is that I think there is a point in this conversation. I, I think that, um, clear that the conversation that we were having about was me about whether me and Laura were abusive towards you. And which is why I'm here, which is why I'm here. So it is about me. Were you abusive to me? Yes, no. you were. I hate, in my opinion, when we talk about like, um, in my opinion, when we talk about abusive, a lot of these terms are very nebulous or very like bubbly, like off of different areas. Like they can touch a lot of different concepts. When I think of abusive, I generally think of something that is closer to torture uh, than just being mean. Uh, generally, something I think is usually considered torture is when you're inflicting pain on somebody that for whatever reason uh, can't evade, avoid, or fight back. That's generally what I think of. When I think of abusive, I generally think of somebody's in a position where they can't really respond or leave and they just kind of have to take it. Abusive to me seems like a lighter version of torture. I don't like that abusive has been warped into like being mean. So like, for instance, like me, like, you know, if, if me and Lycan got into a fight, you know, six months ago, and I'm like, Lycan, you're a f retard, kill yourself, I hate you, blah, 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 right? I don't think it's abusive. I think it's just me being mean, right? Now, now that Lycan, you know, works for me, if Lycan was in my apartment and every time he came in, I started shouting at him, now it kind of does feel a little bit abusive. Cause like, well, what, is he just gonna quit his job and just ditch his shit now that he's like moved here or whatever, right? That feels a little bit stranger um, because, of the, um, because of the dynamics at play, I guess, yeah. So yeah, I don't like this. I don't know. I don't know if Wick has the 
capability of being abusive to Merck. Uh, Wick has no control over her career. They're not dating, they're not family members. I don't know how Wick can be abusive towards Merck at all. I don't know if they're friends. Like, yeah, I, do, I don't know what, what the capacity for abuse here even is. Okay, that was your opinion. I think you were being no, abused. Just, being it's, it's not an how do you handle conversations with people who have a diagnosed mental health disorder? Can you trust their self-assessment? I mean, it depends on the disorder. It depends on who you're talking to. And it depends on if they've self-diagnosed or not. Yeah. now. It's like the not, it's kind of like, this is what I mean by accidental gaslighting, but not gaslighting, but not gaslighting. It's the wrong word. It's like the technical term. You're doing this thing where anytime Merck shares anything about herself, you put on a face, you doubt, you signal to your audience she's crazy, which is fair, I guess, but your whole body language is so dismissive. It's so rude. It's fine, but that's what I'm saying. You're already prejudging her. You're not listening to her, which is fine. You can do that, but that's why I call it abusive because if I did anything you were doing, put me in jail because it would be intentional. Yeah, none of that, none of that is abusive. Um, God damn it. You're really going to fucking make me. What a horrible clip. All you've done is piqued my curiosity. Hold on, we've missed so much drama. What's, what's up? What's up? Is what's up? Wick emotionally abusive? Oh, that's the... That's the thing. Okay. Uh, give me one second. <clears throat> All right, before we, before we start this conversation, I, I think I need to take the time to kind of establish myself into the conversation. So one, I acknowledge that this is not my sphere. Okay, this is Britney's. This is, wait, who's streaming this? So who's... Of view are we looking at from Wix, right? So we are in Wix bubble right now. Therefore, I will not be acting like my character because the only place that is safe for me to be my character is within my own community. So I will be serious throughout this conversation. But do not take that for me saying I will not be honest. I'm going to be honest with exactly how I feel. I'm going to call it like I see it, but I will do so in a respectful way. So if you get offended by what I say, I apologize that you are offended, but I'm not going to sugarcoat the truth. Okay, does that make sense? It does. Also, uh, I just quit my job and I was able to sleep for the first time normally. And I okay, I've never interacted with this Aurora person before, right? Just making sure. So glad I waited for this stream. Oh, here, you can always come back next month, Google. Let me help you out there, buddy. They're powering up and combining. Hello? Why is this not working? Hey, you're live. What's what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Wait, give me acting like my character because the only place that is safe for me to be my character is within my own community so i will be serious throughout this conversation but do not take that for me saying i will not be honest i'm going to be honest with exactly how i feel i'm gonna call it like i see it but i will do so in a respectful way why are you so pressed i'm not pressed it's just weird when sometimes people are like oh i don't want to watch this stream today well then just don't come back later you don't have to tell everybody it's like when people are in forums they used to do this or separate people are like i don't think i'm gonna be back anymore and it's like okay bro just leave <laughs> nobody's waiting for you to exit okay just peace out it's all good dude so if you get offended by what i say i apologize that you are offended but i'm not gonna sugarcoat the truth okay does that make sense it does. Also, uh, I just quit my job and I was able to sleep for the first time normally, and I have not taken my ADHD medicine, so if it seems like I'm bouncing off the walls, it's because I most definitely am. Okay. Is that good news that you quit your job? Are you excited? I, okay, okay so you're not, you're not taking your medicine. Can I ask you, why you don't, don't take your medicine? My ADHD medication? Okay. Um, because I don't want to, because it's a methamphetamine or an amphetamine and I don't like it. As long as I'm not hurting anybody, it's fine. I stay at home, I stream, I don't need to take my ADHD medication. Now, if I actually was a schizophrenic like people think, and I wasn't taking my schizo pills, then that would be a problem. But ADHD isn't, isn't necessarily like a bad thing. ADHD is my superpower. Okay, careful. Okay, careful, because I'm about to talk a whole bunch of bullshit that might not be true for everybody, okay? I'm about to talk a whole bunch of bullshit that might not be true for everybody. Talk to your therapist, talk to other friends, and blah, 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 blah. Oftentimes, these are just questions I have in my mind, okay? These are questions that I have in my mind. Oftentimes, I'll hear somebody point out a mental illness they have, and then I hear somebody say something along the lines of like, well, this mental illness is actually my superpower. One of the things that I wonder sometimes is, do you actually have that mental illness or are you very, 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 very far away, like on the lighter end of the spectrum of that mental illness? I am so curious about that uh, because usually, like I'll hear somebody say with autism, autism is my superpower. I've met people that are actually autistic and I've known people that have, that have siblings or friends that are low functioning autistic, okay? The only thing that that's a superpower for is beating the sh of your mom when you're 25 years old because the male caretaker hasn't shown up yet to like help you eat, okay? That's the superpower, okay? Um, I don't, I don't know if I like it when some of these things are phrased as superpowers because I noticed that like over the past 10 or 15 years, probably in response to the stigmatization of mental illness, which is really shitty, people have reframed it and instead of taking an honest or accurate look at it, they started to romanticize it. ADHD is my superpower. Um, now again, obviously I've got some personal buy-in here, so maybe I'm an asshole. And I used to say that actually. I used to say that same cope shit. I like ADHD. I can read all my chats at the same time. I can do all this shit. I can multitask and blah, 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 blah. That was a cope. That's always been a cope. Every single time I've said it, it's a cope. There has never in my life been a time where I've been on Vyvanse and I'm thinking, God, I wish I could just focus less better. Or like, oh, dude, um, I really want to get up and like do the laundry and this and this and this. I wish I wouldn't have taken my meds today so I could kind of just like walk around the house looking at all the things I need to do and then just go back to my phone and either masturbate or browse Reddit for six hours. Like, oh, 
why did I take my medication today? Or like, man, like I'm on stream, uh, you know, and we're going through topic after topic. I wish I could kind of just get like yanked around by like a random comment and like focus on that. But like, it's never, ever, ever happened. Now maybe, maybe my ADHD is more severe. So the medication like brings me in line more, or maybe I'm not sick at all and I'm just on some crazy cope now with medication, blah, 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 blah. But, um, yeah, I've known people who have ADHD who like don't shower. They don't take care of their bodies. It's like really extreme. So sometimes when I hear people do this thing like, oh, ADHD is my superpower. Like how, in what regard, in what regard is you having like a deficiency in dopamine, like a superpower? How is this helping you? Actually, one thing that I will say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop. One thing I will say where ADHD can be a superpower is if you need to focus on something really badly that has a consistent reward scheme, then ADHD can be a superpower. So when I was a professional StarCraft II player, then ADHD was superpower. Because I could sit and play StarCraft II for 16 hours a day, every day, over and over and over again for months I did that. Um, or when I, uh, when I was like playing Factorio or grinding through like my autism games. In that case, ADHD can be a superpower because like I'll sit here and I will play, you know, Factorio for 12 hours a day over and over and over and over and over again. That ADHD can be a superpower. Um, because, you, because my understanding is, um, my understanding is if you have a dopamine deficiency because you ADHD, right? Whether it's um, the, the biomechanical reasons are complicated and I barely even understand them, right? But if you have a dopamine deficiency, things that give you consistent streams of dopamine are very, 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 very like addicting for ADHD people. This is where, where the ADHD hyper focus comes from, right? That you'll find a game or a thing that regularly rewards you and you'll grind that shit for 16 hours because it's finally giving you like the, that stimulation that you need. Um, so yeah, I hate these, I hate the romanticization, romanticization, romanticization of, of mental illness shit. It drives me crazy, but yeah. Brittany, uh, conversation sound like she stands radical skepticism of the shared nature of human experience. This seems contrary to psychology. Everybody's skeptic, I agree. She probably does feel that way, yes. Um, but. Um, you have another problem with disabilities where people develop unique skills because of their disability, um, but that does not mean it is an inherent advantage. For example, someone's missing arms might be really good at using their feet to do stuff as an adaptation, but that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean it doesn't suck shit to miss your fucking arms, true. Uh, true, destiny, it's a way to try and deal with the weight of whatever your diagnosis is. It is a half cope when trying to process the good and bad of a diagnosis, true. Also, this is also something that, um, it's taken me a long time to learn. I talked about this a little bit before. Uh, remember, you can learn maladaptive behaviors. Maladaptive behaviors are really, really, really good for some things. That's why they're maladaptive. They're, they're adaptive because it helps you navigate a particular thing you couldn't before, but it's maladaptive. It's a poor adaptation because there's probably a better one that would require more work that would be holistically more healthy for you. So in my case, right, it's probably um, one thing I spoke about was I have a maladaptive issue where I don't set boundaries or anything or make asks of other people in my personal or even professional life because people in my life have always been really unreliable. So I'm very self-reliant, right? Now it's maladaptive because in some ways it's very beneficial for streaming and everything. I've been very self-reliant for the most part and I've like done really good at that, but it's also maladaptive because in my personal relationships, um, sometimes people can get really crazy in my personal life and do absolutely insane shit that nobody else in their entire life would ever tolerate. And I might not even say anything about it publicly because it's so crazy because uh, I let people walk all over me, et cetera, et cetera, right? So these are like examples of like a maladaptive behavior in practice, ways that it can be good, ways that it can be bad. Um, but yeah, but the, the best thing that you can do is if you have a maladaptive behavior, find out why it works for you, try to like take the good from that and then apply that to your life while like getting rid of the bad or like changing your behavior overall, if you can do that. Sorry, that was a long spiel on that, but yeah. Sorry. Okay. Is that wrong? Um, you think it's I, uh, this was going to derail us if we go down this road. It's going no, to derail us. I, think I understand. But I think that, yes, if you are prescribed a medication for ADHD, for bipolar. Do ADHD people get more addicted to porn because it's easier? I don't know. Like I said, when I, before my medication, I was masturbating like three to four times a day. So I don't know if it's an ADHD thing or not. Um, also, if I'm like hanging with a girl, we will f like four, five, six, seven times in a night. I don't know if it's an ADHD thing or not or what, but that's just a, <laughs> maybe I'm just a coomer. I'm not sure. Okay. Back to this. Okay. Or whatever. Oh, I'm not the same, but wait, not the same. Like you have to understand, ADHD medication is not the same as bipolar medication. Certainly, the one you have to take. Certainly, but again, if you are not taking a, if, if I have condition, even if it's a mild condition, and I refuse to take my medication for it by choice because I just don't want to, then there is a risk of that condition exacerbating to a certain degree. And while it Brittany is super duper ultra right here. Brittany is super right here. I don't know if Wick is aware of that or wants to engage with that. For things like ADHD medication, um, you can either take it or you cannot take it. Um, 
I mean, like, I think it'll have negative, for me, it has negative effects on my life if I don't, but that's a lot different than medication for like bipolar or, um, is there medication prescribed for borderline? Um, like other types of like actual like mental disorders. Uh, yeah. There's no medication that specifically treats borderline, but there are several types of medications that can be useful. Oh, so you could probably take like anti-anxiety, like Xanax or shit like that maybe, but okay, yeah. gotcha. Or lithium or whatever, okay. Weird question, but has Merck and Brittany been hanging around each other a lot? Brit gets super excited when Merck says dumb shit and the interaction is weird from beginning to end. I think Brittany started to attach herself to everybody that came like out of my stream. I don't know if it's a way to get back at me or to affirm or be in my, I'm not sure, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but. Is it possible to get ADHD when you're an adult if you do not dis display symptoms during childhood? My understanding is ADHD is pretty heritable. I don't think there are any environmental factors that play into ADHD. I used to think that, but I don't think that's true. Um, and you either kind of have it or you don't from like an early age, I believe. I don't think you can develop ADHD. Um, I th oh God, again, low conviction on these statements. I could be wrong, but I think, um, I think ADHD has like, it's like a weird thing where you have, are these your neurons? Um, and for some reason, your synapses between other neurons or something, basically, dopamine like kind of like leaks out of these things and doesn't get to the, I think it's your neurons, right? Doesn't get in here. And so your dopamine levels are like really low. And you can take medication. You can either take medication that pushes it back in. I think that's an amphetamine. Or you can take medication that prevents it from leaking out. I think that's uh, uh, methyl methyl methylenidate or whatever methylphenidate, um, I think are the two different ways basically that you can treat ADHD. It's either a medication to prevent, I think, the shit from leaking um, or a medication to kind of like push it back in, um, I, I, I think, like very broadly. Also, I don't know how well uh, neurologists understand this and I certainly don't understand it uh, so uh, that well. This is like, a, I'm trying to remember from articles I've read or whatever, but I, I don't understand the biological underpinnings too well for it, but yeah. Well, it might not hurt her as much as someone not taking their psychotic, they're taking their antipsychotics or whatever. There is a risk when you come, like you are prescribed this, this medication for a reason, right? But it's like always, when you get ADHD, yeah, if you get ADHD medication, if you get like herpes medication, if you're getting medication, but this is, these are optional medications. Your doctor doesn't make you take them. Some people benefit from them, some people don't. I recommend ADHD medication if it helps you, but it's an optional medication. So like in my case, right? I, whenever I worked a full-time job, I would take it. I didn't like taking it, but for those days where I needed to be focused, I needed to not be bouncing all over the walls, that's fine. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I am put into a position where I can't quit my job, so I'm streaming full-time now. I don't need to focus. I can be zany, I can be funny, I can be bouncing off the walls because that's how I feel comfortable. Now, if I was in a situation where I need to have that focus, then I would- And then this is my feeling, and I haven't had adequate pushback yet, so I still feel strongly about this because I keep getting people emailing me telling me that they agree, so I could be wrong in this. Personally, and also, Keep in mind when I say this, I'm recommending the opposite of what some physicians recommend, okay? So I'm speaking against some doctor advice. So if you have a doctor, I would trust the doctor over me. Just be aware that when I'm recommending these things, it's not always like, I am I know I'm right, blah, 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 blah. There are people that just, I've also heard some doctors say the opposite, okay? Personally, I don't like the idea of just taking your meds when you need to focus for ADHD, because I feel like whatever your brain chemistry should be or should be set at or whatever your day-to-day -day should look like, you should be on like a regular dose and like figure what your life looks like out, figure out what your life looks like on that dose of medication. The idea that like, I need to concentrate today. Like I'm gonna do house and like take my shit. If, if, it feels like, and I could be wrong, but it feels like that could lead to abusive behavior where, where you're abusing your medication. Especially because I feel like you're probably way more likely to feel that euphoria or that really good med medicine kick um, if you're only taking it like sparingly. So I feel like that could lead to abuse. That's just my feeling, but I could be wrong on that. And again, uh, like my doctor recommended, um, my doctor recommended a lot of drug holidays. She said, oh, you could just take it four days a week and not three days a week, blah, blah, blah. So I'm telling you advice. I'm just letting you know that there are doctors that agree and disagree on this. So be careful just like taking anything I say, blah, blah, yeah. Some from adults. What is this? Somebody link me this real quick. Adults and some from parents that relate to medication uh, quote, vacations. So in one case, there's a parent um, on the webinar whose insurance has run out and they're not able to afford their child's medication for this over the summer. And she's wondering if that's going to be um, damaging, um, I guess, medically. There's another adult who is taking his XR uh, long acting medication only during the work week. And he's also wondering if that is that a problem. Um, so can you comment about um, medication vacations, either long or short? Sure. Um, the whole thing, I, I hate the word medication holidays because it makes it sound entirely too joyous, um, <laughs> uh, was originally based on very spurious data that said that these medications could slow the growth of children. Um, turns out zero basis for that. Um, go ahead. It, it's, uh, there's no basis for stopping the medication so a child will grow. Um, the nice thing about these medications being completely effective in one hour is that you don't have to take the medications all day, every day. And indeed, about 40% of my adults use them as needed. 
for a specific task. An attorney who says, I've got to write- Dr. The- Russell Barkley is the best video content on ADHD by far. Yeah, I know. He's the guy that I been, binged watched like seven years ago when Nathan got his ADHD diagnosis. Yeah, he's got a ton of seminars. I think he's considered like the leading. He also has videos where he criticizes that uh, Gober Meyer, whatever that cat lady recommended um, <laughs> on ADHD too, yeah. But yeah, he's like, uh, I think he's renowned. I think he's got like some of the most published literature or whatever on like ADHD related stuff, yeah this legal brief, I'd much rather do it in two hours than two days, so I'm gonna take my medication. Um, For children, and anybody basically high school or younger, I recommend take the medication very consistently, more than just for school, Um, because if you look at what the risks of non-treatment are, uh, almost all of the risks occur outside of class. Um, That if you have ADHD and you don't take medication, your risk of developing a substance use disorder quadruples. Your risk of an injury producing accident uh, that's severe enough to have a hospital record quadruples. Your risk of getting a speeding ticket, ticket triples. Your risk of an unplanned out of wedlock pregnancy, 1,000%, tenfold. Your risk of being involved in the juvenile justice system due to impulsive bad decision making goes up 700%. And we could go on and on and on. He also criticizes the superpower narrative. Yeah, I know, I've heard him talk about that yet. That's why I stole, I think I stole that dopamine line from because he doesn't like the term hyperfocus. And I think, if I understood him correctly, I think when I watched him, I also agree that I don't like the term hyperfocus because hyperfocus seems like for ADHD, you can direct this hyperfocus, but that's not true. You only hyperfocus on things that reward you with a consistent dopamine uh, schedule, basically. Yeah. Like if I could hyperfocus on my homework, that would be awesome, but I can't. The only thing I can hyperfocus on is things that, yeah, give you lots of consistent rewards. Yeah. Video games. On medication. The risks are. You think you would have finished your school if you had this medication help before? Not to sound like a huge whatever piece of shit, but if I had this medication before, I would have went to like law school or fucking med school or something. If I feel like I could sit and read for six hours a day, because I already did like okay, like reading and absorbing information. I took so many AP and dual enrollment classes when I was in high school, and I survived off of just being able to like kind of absorb information. But if I know that I could sit down and read and actually study for more than five minutes a night without wanting to kill myself, I would have gone. I probably would have done something besides music for school. I think, but maybe not. Who knows? Maybe I would have been a retard the whole life. Who knows? the same as the general population. Right now, pretty much all of the risks are associated with not treating ADHD, virtually none associated with treatment. So when parents worry about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, um, it all comes from non-treatment. Um, so I strongly say, you know, until you get into college, seven days a week it is the goal. Uh, and that's, I suppose, so that you can best evaluate side effects and effectiveness um, until the child's able to make their own decisions about um, about those issues, right? I mean, I guess, yeah. Well, okay. again, it, it's more than just school. Right. Um, you, you're not going to get pregnant in school. You're not going to have an auto wreck in school. Uh, you're not going to be, hopefully, doing drugs in school. Um, you're, you're never safer than you are when you're in a public school. Uh, where the dangers of ADHD are is after school, nights, evening, weekends, holidays. That's where the dangers are. Okay, great. Um, uh, on the question of um, the length of time that medication lasts, a couple of questions related to this. Okay, we don't care about Okay, gotcha. All right. Take it, but right, why do I need my ADHD medicine when I'm not working? I'm like, not, I'm working, you know I'm what I'm saying? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. All right, I'm not an expert by any means. But it would, again, be... I would feel bad about myself when I'm by myself if I didn't say, hey, maybe rethink that. Um, so that's your, that's well, your that, opinion. Yeah, that does make sense. Like as somebody who has an ADHD partner, somebody who has like ADHD in her family, like you don't, my ADHD, not everyone needs to take their pills for ADHD. It's, it's completely up to the individual. So like, why do you think people with ADHD need to take pills? Be- uh, in order to better function um, in the world. In the world. I, I, conf- I feel like, yeah, so I feel like Wick has a, an opinion about medication in general, but probably doesn't know much about the particulars of ADHD medication. There's going to be, yeah. I, I, hmm. I don't want to shit on Wick. I'm not shitting on Wick. I think you probably need to know a bit about the individual types of medications that you're criticizing people for taking or not taking. Because for some things that Wick is saying, it's so undeniably true, people won't f*** with it, right? You're not going to talk to somebody who's like, oh yeah, you know, I, sometimes I skip a few days on my um, on my Zoloft. Sometimes I skip a few days on my Prozac. Sometimes I just don't take my well-being. You'll, you won't hear people say, because when they start skipping days, they know it immediately. They're miserable immediately. They get weird brain zaps. Their day is f- like they, these, these people do not skip their medication because they can't. They know they can't. The process of getting on and weaning off and the effect on your mood is like huge. But other people, um, unfortunately, there are types of medication that people will skip even that are to se- their severe detriment. There are a lot of type 2 diabetics, for instance, that don't keep up on their insulin. Um, and your body is actually degenerating and destroying itself and necrotizing. And, you, you know, you get all these, you know, diabetic neuropathies and different, like, extremities and your eyes will rot. But, like, people sometimes just won't take their fucking insulin or they won't do it. They don't monitor their blood sugar because they're young. They don't feel like it's a big deal, whatever. So, yeah, it definitely, you, I think you kind of need to know, um, I think you kind of need to know a bit about the medication you're telling people to take or not take 
That's you also get brain zaps and you get off ADHD meds. I've never heard that before. Maybe that's true, but I've never heard that in my life. I usually hear that um, referred to with SSRIs or SNRIs, um, but I, I could be wrong. But I've never heard that before, yeah. <clears throat> One of my buddies takes meds for it sometimes, but it's not constant. He doesn't really have massive sways one way or another from the meds, sure. The thing I don't understand is why are people so comfortable about talking about ADHD and treatment for ADHD with zero fucking knowledge, but so much less comfortable about the same way about autism and schizophrenia. Um, well, when you're getting into like mental disorders, or I guess ADHD is a mental disorder, right? Hyper attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. All disorders are not the same, especially like mild ADHD is probably not like the biggest attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Yeah, as opposed to something involving like psychosis is going to be a really big deal. <laughs> um, or things that have induce like delusions or paranoia are gonna be really big deals, even in mild forms, I think, yeah. Why do you think people ADHD need to take pills? Be uh, in order to better function um, in the world. In the world, I'm on a computer right now, dude. I'm not in the real world, I'm not working. I'm on the computer hanging out. I treat streaming like a hobby, okay? It just happens that I make money and that I- Everything Merck is saying here is stupid, but it's no surprise. Want it to be my full-time job, right? I'm not out in society where I need it to also, be- It okay. also depends on how, se and, and again, I don't know you, Mark. I don't know how severe your okay. ADHD is. Thank but you again, we talked about this before, how we let the, the most functional uh, of the mentally ill, right? Or the people with mental uh, issues like ADHD be the front for people, uh, for all of the mental illness that is out there. And while some people may be very high functioning with ADHD, there are some people with ADHD who literally cannot function at all, even by themselves. True. without, without their meds, yeah. yeah. And I think that, Thank again, I don't know you, Mark. So not knowing you and not knowing which of these you are, again, like, you know, you do what you want, but I think that, again, it feeds into the if he's into the whole, well, Mark is probably doing some dangerous things and we probably should tell her about it and uh, maybe warn her a little bit. I, I think that's a fair thing to do. I don't think that's condescending. I don't think that's patronizing. I think that's something I would like people to do with me. And that's what I'm curious about. Like, why do you assume the worst? Because if it's not the worst, then you can just ignore me. But if it is the worst, then hope maybe, hopefully, I don't know what me saying this would do, right? Because if the, it, it's really hard sometimes to get the mentally ill people to take their meds like they- uh, ADHD is not a mental illness. illness though. It's just a disorder. It's, you're not mentally yeah. ill if you have ADHD. You just can't- It's all under the same level, right? ADHD is a, is a mental illness. It is a disorder. What, or what are we what are we saying? Mental illness is. It's not a personality disorder, right? ADHD isn't a personality disorder, is it? It's considered a mental disorder, is it not? Like NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, or by oh bipolar disorder. Is bipolar a personality disorder? Or bipolar bipolar is a mental disorder as well, right? It's a mental illness, correct? Oh, I'm sure I'm not f***ing these up. Yeah, it's just bipolar, it's not bipolar personality disorder, right? Um, a mood disorder, it's both. Maybe the, maybe the borders between these are a little bit more fuzzy. My understanding is that like, um, I believe personality disorders can't be treated or changed. I don't think if it's a personality disorder, but um, mental illness generally has uh, medication that can treat it, I think. I think that's like broadly speaking the difference between the two. Um, like you can't give somebody medication for, um, well, let's just look up like personality disorders. Yeah, I don't think you can treat any of these with medication. So paranoid personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder, this doesn't mean schizophrenic. Um, uh, schizotypic, uh, schizotypal personality disorder, um, and then for group B or cluster B, borderline, histrionic, narcissistic, antisocial personality disorder, um, avoided, dependent. I don't think you medicate any of these, but um, you can give medication for things like anxiety and stuff in, in this, uh, or like other symptoms or other things, but I don't think you can, um, yeah. Somebody said bipolar and related disorders are given a chapter of their own in the DSM-5. Um, between depressive disorders and schizophrenia, oh sure. But something like, for instance, like depress, major depressive disorder, I think, MDD, is depression. Stuff like that is considered a, pers is considered a mental illness and is treated with, um, uh, is treated with medication and stuff. I, and I believe ADHD fits more closely alongside those things. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Um, you say that I understand the perception is that ADHD is more benign, but the outcomes we see are horrible. ADHD is one of the greatest predictors for out of wedlock kids. You're like four times more likely to be obese, 13 years lower life expectancy, and much more. Wait, really? I didn't know those things. Is that true? What's your opinion on the DSM-5, if any? Um, I prefer 3.5, but, you know, the ruling is more autistic there. Um, ADHD outcomes. The fact that Dustin knows other shit is a bit concerning. Knows all one shit. We, I know, we know lots of random shit. I feel like we've dealt with so many crazy people here. And my son has ADHD. Um, found that at the age of around 27, around one third of the they're created for adult HD. What are we looking for? 
32.2% of students with a combined type of ADHD drop out of high school compared to 15% of teens with no psychiatric disorder. Oof, that's a 100% increase in high school dropouts. Between two and 8% of college students are estimated of ADHD. Um, study found that they're far less likely to enroll in a four-year college. They're 11 times more likely to not enroll in any school versus enrolling in a four-year college. 50% attend vocational or junior colleges. 50% hold a four-year degree compared to 48% of the control group. 0.06% held a graduate degree compared to 5.4% of the control group. Is that a hundred times decrease? Jesus, okay. Um, 11 times more likely to be unemployed and not in school. Four times more likely to be an unskilled versus clerical. 61% more likely to have ever been fired compared to 43% of the comparison group. 33% more likely to have ever been laid off. 53% more likely to ever quit a job due to dislike and they earn close to $2 per hour less in wages. Okay, holy fuck. Dr. King mentioned there are non-medication ways to improve or maybe cure ADHD or you can that. I haven't seen evidence for any of that. He said that and I maybe I should ask him again to send me a study, but I haven't seen evidence for any of that. Destiny, are you saying BPD can't be treated through medication? Borderline, no. I don't believe borderline can be treated through medication. I think that somebody can give you medication for other things. Um, like I think lithium might be a mood stabilizer, I think, Ugh, careful. Um, and I think you can give like Xanax and stuff for panic attacks or anxiety or whatever, but um, you can't give a medication that's like, ah, oh, my BPD is under control because I'm medicated or something. Like I think BPD is a constant, like you have to learn techniques, you've gotta learn how to regulate your emotion, you've gotta learn things, you gotta apply these things throughout your entire life. Um, I don't think you can just take a pill and it's like, ah, oh, my BPD is like under control, I'm good, you know? Um, okay. The treatment is usually dialectic behavior therapy for BPD. Yeah, um, DBT, uh, yes. <clears> hmm, <throat> <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. ADHD is not a mental illness, it's a mental disorder. Okay, maybe there's like mental disorders, personality disorders, and mental illnesses? Um, okay, back to this, sorry. Well, well kind of. Uh, it, it depends is, on it's how not. you read the DSM. Can I just ask, wait, so is this about like relieving your guilt? Doctor. So you know you've said something? Is it about like relieving your guilt so you know you said something? It's that not just a guilt thing. That is part of it, to be honest with you. Like that, there, is there are coping mechanisms to make help control ADHD, but they're not fixed or cures, and they only work when you've turned them into habits that are difficult to break. Yeah, I think something I noticed is, because over the past week, while I've been spiraling my personal life shit, I stopped taking my medication because um, my sleep and wake was just and I feel weird if I've only gotten two hours of sleep, I don't want to take like uh, an amphetamine and keep me awake because I don't know if I'm about to like burn the fuck out of my brain and have it like collapse or destroy itself. Um, there are some things I noticed though that like now when I stop taking my medication, there are certain habits that I've established where it's like, oh, it's a little bit easier to do this or that. Um, but then there are other things where when I'm on my medication, it's just easier to do whatever. Um, one thing that I noticed, this sounds like such a stupid cope or such a weird thing to say. Uh, and again, I highly recommend looking into this. Um, initially, I thought for ADHD, if you take amphetamines, it helps you lose weight because it curbs your appetite because that's what amphetamines do. While that is partially true, another thing that it does is, this is so stupid. Um, I'm just gonna be very frank about this. If it sounds like I'm blaming ADHD, f you, I've accomplished more in my life, I can blame a few things, okay, kill it, f you, okay? Um, Non-medicated, if I have a package of cookies in my kitchen, that package of cookies will last at most two days, maybe. Um, if I'm walking by and I see it, I gotta grab a cookie, obviously, okay? If I walk by a package, there's a cookie, I'll grab one or two, because why not, it, I walk by. It's very easy when I'm medicated um, to walk by and see it, and it's like, you know, it could be nice right now, but like, I don't need it right now, and just keep walking. That, it seems stupid, I've noticed even when going through airports, that like, I'll go through, I'll see a store, and I'll be like, man, normally I would really wanna just like buy a pack of cookies for like my plane trip, but I don't, I don't actually need that right now, I'm good. Um, that need to like see things and like grab it and just like take a bite of something or eat it or grab something or whatever is completely eliminated. And I don't think that that's like a, my appetite has been severely curbed. I think that's just like, a, I feel like I don't need the instant kick or sugar or stimulus from just like grabbing a cookie. Like the impulsive shit, yeah, is like so dramatically reduced. The impulsive shit is so dramatically reduced. Um, um, that it makes it easy to not just like grab for shit like that, yeah. 
Um, it's impulse control. I don't know why the meds affect it, but yeah. But well, because I think it's all part of that. Remember, when we talk about like dopamine or serotonin, um, people talk about these neurochemicals in very simplistic ways. People say, like, oh, dopamine is the happy drug. Uh, serotonin is like a happy neurochemical. Um, these neurochemicals are incredibly complicated and they regulate like a billion things in your body. Serotonin and dopamine are not just used for one or two things. They affect all sorts of part of your nervous system, of your, um, the, whatever the system I think cannabinoids act on. Uh, there's like so many parts of your body, of your nervous system that are affected by these neurochemicals. It's not just your happiness. It's not just your, uh, you know, your uh, appetite or whatever. There's tons of things these things uh, affect. Just as a heads up on that, yeah. The, these neurochemicals control for so many different things. Um, reason I got diagnosed with HD didn't start me getting a BS in biochemistry and a grad student and uh, grad degree in statistics but now I'm medicating and focus better the side effects are brutal oh, I'm sorry I don't know if I read that one before or not sorry because I read the other comment um, wait hold on What's he right now on Judean deleting his channel and to an evangelical? I don't know. Is that real or is it like another prank thing? Okay. Is this, this like when you've been warned, is this becoming the you to warn others, right? And again, if I see someone that might be doing something harmful, I should probably say something that's something that's built into me, yes. But also, right, there are people in my audience listening. We talked about influence as well. And so while you may be high functioning with ADHD, there are other people who are in my audience and in your audience and in other people's audience who, who to take their meds, to not take their meds is going to damage them in a way it will not damage you. And so yes, my standard line, what I will tell to everyone right here now is if a doctor prescribes you medication, take that medication. It is it's optional. You have to call your doctor and say, I need my pills. Like ADHD, you have to call your doctor and say, hey bro, give me pills, he won't care. He he streams the 300 viewers on kick reading scripture. <clears throat> Here is one thing I will say. If you wanna to convert to Islam or Christianity or Judaism or whatever, okay? I love you and I respect you and I'll support whatever you wanna do, but please don't just like pick up scripture and start reading. As stupid as it sounds, um, just reading the Bible or just reading whatever is not is only gonna get you like 30% maybe of the way to like understanding what the religion is all about. Like there's a lot of um, biblical scholarship or probably Quranian scholarship or Torani, I don't know what the fuck you call it. And we call it biblical scholarship I think in, in Christianity. Um, there's a lot that goes into like reading and interpreting and contextualizing like all of the stuff that's said in scripture. It's probably the same too uh, for, um, you know, like the Hadiths in the Quran or the Torah or whatever, um, it's really good to, yeah, like follow educated people that also discuss these texts. If you wanna read it, I would never discourage you from reading the text if you wanna convert, but like you should also listen to other people that have studied them as well because the, the scholarship and the studying is gonna fill you in on way more information than you'll get from just reading a particular thing, um, yeah. You take your pills. My doctor, actually, this is what my doctor who prescribes, because I go tri-monthly for my ADHD medicine refill. I take Vyvanse, I used to be on Adderall XR, okay? I'm on 30 milligrams. My doctor said that if I don't need to take it, I don't have to take it because one, you get accustomed to taking it all the time. It doesn't have that much of an effect. So it like barely, like you barely can focus anymore because it's like you're so used to it. And two, it is- Fuck, hold on. I can't type and listen to her at the same time because now she's about to say a bunch of really dumb shit about medication. Okay. Um, hold on. So I take Vyvanse, I used to be on Adderall XR, okay? I'm on 30 milligrams. My doctor said, that if I don't need to take it, I don't have to take it because one, you get accustomed to taking it all the time. It doesn't have that much of an effect. So it like barely, like. So my understanding is about 50% of people that start an amphetamine and get to an appropriate dose um, don't need an increase. And then I think like 40% will ask for an increase and get it, but eventually they level out too. The idea, and if I'm wrong on this, please shoot me a study in chat showing that I'm incorrect on this, okay? Because I welcome uh, contradiction, okay? Um, I seek it out. Uh, my understanding is that most people, if they get a good prescription for an amphetamine and an appropriate dose, they'll take it and they'll be good on that dose for the rest of their life. The idea that you constantly build up more, you constantly have a higher tolerance, you constantly need more and more and more and more and more, I don't believe that's true. I don't think there's research that supports that. Maybe for some people, but for most people, I don't believe that's the uh, case, yeah. Matt says, we, Destiny, you're an atheist. You don't know the first thing about being religious. Uh, I attended private Catholic, uh, grade school and I went to a Jesuit high school, which is the teaching order of the Catholic Church. Um, every single year, we were required to take two semesters of some sort of religious studies class and I went to church and was Catholic. I've been through all the sacraments, save for marriage and holy orders. Um, so f you, and suck my dick in the holy religious way, okay? I could be wrong about some shit about Catholicism though, I admit, I don't know, I didn't f 
study the catechism from front to back. Um, but yeah, if you think I'm wrong about something, feel free to correct me. Like you barely can focus anymore because it's like you're so used to it. And two, it is bad on your heart. Vyvanse is very bad on your heart, which is why I don't take it all the time. This is also another untrue thing. The idea that any amphetamine is bad for your heart is not true. My understanding is that the increase in blood pressure over like a decade is like one to two percent. It is there. And if you've got a pre-existing heart condition, it is definitely something to be concerned about. But the idea that like, oh God, I'm gonna be on an amphetamine. Oh God, like my blood pressure was one, what is it, 120 over, I don't even know the health of it. And now it's like 200, oh God, my blood. Like, that's not true. Uh, it shouldn't have this dramatically crazy impact on your heart. If you've got a pre-existing condition, it's something to worry about. But if you take a um, amphetamine and it helps you manage your schedule better and start exercising, your heart will be healthier in three years or in one year on an amphetamine if you're working out than if you're a lazy piece of shit, especially if you're like obese or something otherwise. Your healthcare outcomes even directly related to your heart, your healthcare outcomes even directly related to your heart will be better on an amphetamine if you make any adjustment in your life because of the amphetamine to diet or exercise, okay? Always be aware of that, all right? Ugh. All the time. Um, high blood pressure runs in my family. Obesity runs in my family. All heart disease is very prevalent in my genetics. So therefore, I don't want to fuck up my heart any more than I have to. So if then I you should be getting, you should go to a doctor, get a physical, and find out: Do you have high blood pressure? Because if you do, there's other things you should be doing to bring that into account. If you're, and also, also, um, not to be weird on this and not to be an asshole, but. I don't buy this idea that like, I'm so worried about my health from somebody, and I don't know if this applies to her, but I think it does. If you just sit in your room all day, you never leave, you eat like shit, you don't exercise and blah, blah, blah. It reminds me of people that'll say things like, I would never, ever, ever do, um, uh, I, I, would, I don't trust uh, I don't trust drugs from pharmacies. I don't trust that they're not trying to poison my mind. Meanwhile, you know, they're doing random lines of coke from people they just met five minutes ago, or they're doing all other types of like crazy fucking hard drugs and shit. It's like, really? Or they're eating McDonald's every single fucking day. And it's like, clearly you only care about some of the things you put in your body, right? But yeah. <clears throat> I work a real job and I'm out in the world and I need to focus. Oh, that too. Doesn't she smoke crazy amounts of weed every single day? Yeah, I don't believe her at all for the health claims. This is why I said this at the very beginning of the, um, uh, Destiny, this was you two months ago? Um, I don't think so. Uh, but this is also why I don't believe people that, um, over the vaccine stuff. Remember when I said at the beginning, there was one group of people that I would totally buy if they're like, I don't want the vaccine, I don't put anything unnatural in my body. If you give me like some fucking vegan dude that like grows his own vegetables and he lives like this crazy, I don't wanna say crazy, that's dismissive. He lives like an incredibly health conscientious life where he's controlling every single thing. And he's like, I don't do vaccines, I don't trust it. Okay, that's fair. I think you're, I disagree, but you know, you're consistent. I respect the lifestyle. But when you give me, you know, like a 250 pound conservative living in Louisiana who's eating McDonald's every single day, never exercise, like, I'm not gonna take vaccine. I think it's gonna fucking poison me. I will take it. But when I'm at home in my safe space, streaming, being a retard, I don't have to take it. And like you said, you're not aware of what my doctor told me. Well, guess what? Now you're aware. So my doctor proved that I don't have to take it. So what's the conversation? Can I attempt to build a bridge? Sure. Uh, I, I have ADHD, I'm the type that if I don't take my meds, I literally can't be a human. Like it's, I'm not a hyperactive ADHD, I'm a functional ADHD person. And my psych and my doctor both said to lessen the chances of severe side effects and also lower tolerance, they call it a medication vacation where you take a break from them on days where you don't. Oh, okay, hold on, I'm sorry. Somebody linked this. I don't know if this is contradicting me or agreeing with me. Withdrawal from pharmacological treatment and drug holidays. Um, introduction, a common question often asked healthcare professionals about ADHD medication, particularly about stimulants, is the impact of stopping of a, sto of a stopping medication or taking a drug holiday. A drug holiday is an agreed cessation of medication for a period of time. Questions can be directly related to the impact of cessation on ADHD medication. There's a lot of confusing information. This chapter includes two reviews. Uh, okay, what's our conclusion? No conclusion. Seriously? The committee considered quality of life, ADHD, the quality of evidence, benefits, and harms, cost mix of resource use, other. Fa uh, okay. In the evidence identified in this review, there was a clinically important benefit of drug holidays in terms of parent-rated ADHD, uh, parent-rated or patient-rated? If there's a parent-rated ADHD symptoms and adverse events, the committee discussed, oh, in two periods. What is this review? Hold on, is this, are there typos in here? The committee discussed other benefits and harms of drug holidays, although the trial showed drug holidays causing an improvement in ADHD symptoms. The committee agreed that, um, that the committee agreed that was unlikely to be a specific event and more a marker of low quality of evidence. However, the committee agreed that drug holidays, they may well reduce adverse events. However, the committee agreed that drug holidays, they may well reduce adverse events. One of the harms of drug holidays are that encouraging people to take breaks in medication may lead to worse adherence overall, event, even during non-holiday periods. They got an undergrad assistant to type this shit out. I usually, um, I don't really see like typos and shit on like PubMed stuff. Weird. 
Um, okay. You know, need to function. So, like for me, it would be on a weekend day if I'm going on a walk or something. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I take that break because uh, I have heart. I have a high cholesterol. I've had it since I was a kid. It's genetic, and I have a heart murmur as well. So I, I, I I'm just attempting to give my perspective. Hopefully, build a bridge in in this situation. Um, some people with ADHD do struggle with impulsiveness, but we, you know, I'm not going to assume Merck being impulsive has anything to do with that. But could you? Could I? Is it fair for me to say? And you can correct me, Merck. Would you feel like is it more fun to stream when you're not on your meds versus when you're on them? I think. Okay, for example. When I take my ADHD medication, it's much more serious. Like, I'm much more serious. I'm more focused. Like, I need to be doing something where I can, like, be productive, right? I'm also so curious about this. I've said this a few times. Warning, bullshit conjecture alert. Bullshit conjecture alert, okay? This is bullshit conjecture. There's no study whatsoever to back this up that I'm aware of, okay? When I hear people say this, I'm so curious. When people say, um, because my understanding is, is if you do not have ADHD and you take medication for it, um, there are a lot of negative outcomes that are not counterbalanced by any positive outcome. That it will with your head a little bit. It will make you feel kind of weird. It will make you feel a little bit like more serious or like a zombie or blah, 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 or whatever. Like I've, I've heard these things. Um, and I think I've seen them because if you don't have like the dopamine deficiency and you're hardcore like pumping your brain with it, it like fucks your shit up pretty hard if you don't have ADHD. Um, and I obviously I'm going by anecdote, you know, sample N equals one, okay, it's just me. But when I hear people say this, like, yeah, when I take my medication, I have to be super serious. I have to like be focused. I have to do this. Like, I don't have that experience whatsoever. Not even close. I'm curious if, what I'm curious about is that like, are people taking the medication that don't really need it or they're on too high a dose or it f***s with them? Or maybe different people have different experience on medication. That could be the case as well. And obviously I can't look outside of my own body, so it's hard for me to know. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a very strange feeling to me. I don't feel a single negative, yeah, I don't feel a single negative aspect when I'm on medication relating to ADHD at all. There's nothing negative. I've never felt like, oh God, I have to be so serious now or anything like that ever. I don't want to be productive all the time. Sometimes I just want to be myself. I want to have fun. I want to watch stupid stuff on the internet. I want to game. I want to goof around. I don't want to be serious. And for me, my ADHD med medication makes me serious. So by that logic, your statement of, do you think that it makes you, yes, most definitely, which is why I choose not to take it. Now if I'm doing something serious where like, say I was going to write like a thesis for college or do something like that on stream, then I can take my medication. But there's no need to take ADHD medication if you're not going to be serious. I will, I will, I will copy that. I don't know your situation. I don't know your doctor stuff. It is, it is what it is. Fair. Um, I guess to kind of re stuff. Let me just ask you, Mark. Do you feel that me and Rora were abusive towards you uh, when we had you on? So we are going off the definition. This is your sphere. I'm asking uh, so, you what you feel. So if we are in my space, in my bubble, for me, I feel like you guys weren't being physically abusive, but you were very aware of what you were doing. Whether subconsciously, consciously, you were being very condescending to me. I was screaming, telling you, this is who I am, and you wouldn't listen. Wick, you cut me off multiple times. You didn't let me finish my statements. I would answer a question. Again, with the abuse of like, why can't you just leave the call? Why not just like leave? Like just X and leave the call. Like why, what's keeping you here? And you would just completely ignore my response. I think you guys, and this is just my opinion, my brain, I think you guys went. There is an extremely high amount of people taking ADHD medication who don't need it. It's the most overprescribed thing of all time. Yeah, I wonder about that too. You might want to close your door. Oh, why? Can people see Mel in the background? It should be fine. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't know about like overprescription. I, like, it wouldn't surprise me if ADHD meds were overprescribed because of how easy it is to get them. Getting my ADHD medication was retardedly easy. Um, like I did a telehealth thing. I think I gave indications that I had drug seeking behavior because I said like, oh, like I've done, you know, I've done my friend's medications before and sometimes it feels like I'm on MDMA and blah, blah, blah. And she had no problem prescribing me drugs over the phone after a 30 minute thing. So it, I, yeah, it seems like if you, okay, I want to be super weird. Um, okay, please take everything. I, I'm not, I hate giving so many disclaimers. Please take everything I say about medication with a grain of salt. It feels like there's probably a little bit of, um, under prescribing and over prescribing going on at the same time where a lot of the things related to ADHD can also be like normal issues that normal people have like oh I've got impulse control issues like fuck me um, I should have ADHD medication or um, or there's a lot of people that have ADHD who are like I feel like a lazy piece of shit I don't want to take the medication so then they don't get diagnosed or prescribed right um, yeah so I I'm sure it happens both ways but yeah in there hating me or disliking me whatever it may be and you guys felt like you know you knew more than me and whether it came from the goodness of your hearts whether you guys didn't like me i don't care the point is how i felt and i felt disrespected most definitely which is why i left the call i mean so were you being abusive verbally abusive borderline almost there almost basically there. abusive okay um which i think um bro destiny cap and hella he ser he hella serious since drugs i mean yeah i've been like more yeah serious in terms of like wanting to focus on things but like I can still like joke around with people or band with people, but like it's also because I, I want to like explore more serious things. Like I think that's always been a drive for me. The past. How many times have we had this conversation in the past on my stream for years? Where are the old? Uh, I almost said the wrong. 
where are the old fans at, the old frogs at, where I've been like, okay guys, I think we're gonna do study streams more often, we're gonna do research streams more often, we're gonna do this. Like, I wanted to have the drive to do these, but then it's like, okay, but also, we just discovered the game uh, Ixion. Oh, we just did a new run in Stardew Valley. Oh, we just started another run in Terraria. Oh, we just started a Factorio Space Exploration, right? And uh, we'll do this after. Let's just finish this game, let's just finish this game, let's just finish this game, let me just finish this game, and then we'll do it, and then let me just, okay, but we're starting, right. I've done this a million times. So, yeah, I guess they've made me more serious, but like, this is how serious I've wanted to be. But like, but it's also not like, now I'm here like, did you just say a uh, kill you joke? That's not okay. Also, we should do a fundraiser for Wikipedia, holy shit. It's a fair statement. Fair enough. Um, I guess I would, I would challenge this though. Uh, when, and again, this is a little difficult because I watched, I watched, uh, in great detail, Britney's coverage of what I said. I didn't go back and, and in great detail watched our conversation again, right? So I only saw the clips that Britney showed, right? Uh also, real quick, let me, um, I'm gonna use the rest real quick, hold on. <laughs> Give me uh, 102 seconds. Did I make it back in time? Also, you know what I don't remember? I never remember the episode where Foreman fucking stabbed Cameron with that needle to like make her sick so she would go and <laughs> explore that house. What the fuck? Foreman, that was pretty fucked up. How can you distinguish between lack of discipline versus ADD? Both make you not able to focus on things you do not want to do. Um, how do you differentiate? Um, okay, oh God. Here's, this is my thing, okay? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna give two things. One of these is gonna be jerking myself off and the other is gonna be more serious. I'll give the more serious one first. There are tests that you can do to check for different types of like spatial reasoning IQ and verbal IQ and all of this. And like, I think memory, temporary memory IQ or some bullshit. There's like five different, what are the different IQ bullshits or whatever? Um, if you test these, if you're very high in some, or, or rather like if you're way higher in some than two others, there's two if they're like very, very, very low. Um, that's like an indication that you've got something uh, working memory, maybe. It's an indication that there's something wrong that it can point hardcore towards ADHD. Um, that was one thing. The second thing for me personally is that like when I compare my intelligence to other people and then I compare my impulse control to them, it seems like my impulse control and stuff relating to my directed focus, especially the directed focus part, like how well can I choose to do something is severely lacking. That I can be around people that I feel like I am decently intelligent enough to be around, that I can keep up on all like the lectures, I can keep up on like the learning stuff, and if I do read, I retain the information. But like when I listen to them, like and this happened in all of my AP classes and all of my dual enrollment classes, people are saying this like, yeah, like I studied for this test for like four or five hours last night. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. When I went through high school and college, whenever somebody said they studied for more than 30 minutes in a night, I thought that was a virtue signal. I didn't think that there was a single person that actually, unironically, sat down and studied for more than 30 minutes um, at a night. I remember laughing when we were like a college thing where um, there was a bunch of high schooler people and they were doing the intro to college shit and they were talking about like, yeah, like for every one credit hour you have, you should spend about an hour studying a week. So if you've got like, or, or maybe it was two hours studying. So if you've got like 14 credit hours, you know, during the week you need to be spending at least 14 hours studying two hours a night, that's the bare minimum or whatever. And I, I remember laughing and looking at a friend, I was like, bro, there's no shot. Like anybody studies this much for college is like insane. And then like, everyone around me was like, yeah, I studied for about this much for high school. I'm like, no shot. No shot did you fucking losers study for three hours a night for this bullshit, right? Cause like, yeah, five to 10 minutes and I'm like tapped out. And I'm like, we're done with this shit, okay, yeah. Um, but I, I think when I started to notice those types of disparities, I'm like, okay, well maybe something is wrong, but I didn't uh, obviously take it too seriously until a couple months ago. Um, my primary concern, the Vive Ants, is that it seems to have diminished your autistic noises, frequency and enthusiasm, and I just can't say that. Yeah, but other people say I do like a click thing with my tongue now that I'm not aware of, or I don't know what that means, so who knows. Wait, hold on, quick pit stop, because I got a kick link. Um, Destiny, you're wrong about the oldest constitution. The Magna Carta implemented free trials and juries, which are still in use today. The UK constitution is uncodified, so our constitution is spread out across past laws. My understanding is that what scholars say is that in terms of like a holistic um, constitution, where people like you have a constitution and this is the document that your country uses as the source of its like power and law or whatever, the United States is the oldest one. I don't believe, we can go and study like UK constitutional law, how your shit works, but I don't think the Magna Carta is like, oh, here's the Magna Carta. It's the source and the founding document that all of your laws based off of the same way the US constitution is.